Hi, this is Simon with IQRF. In many cases, you need to control your network or collect data from your network remotely. For these situations, we've developed plug-and-play Ethernet, GSM and Wi-Fi gateways that get automatically connected to the iCurve cloud. Using a very simple API, you can then send your commands from your PC application, website or even Excel sheet and you don't have to take care how the commands and data are delivered to the nodes of your network and back. Let me now show you the whole process from opening a box with your iCurve gateway to sending commands with the iCurve API from your website. In this tutorial, we will use an iCurve GSM gateway and the hardware of the DSDP01 we have ready from the previous tutorials. For using the GSM gateway, you will need a SIM card with data tariff. The only things you will need to know is the APN of your provider and PIN of your SIM card. You take the SIM card and plug it into the gateway in this way. You connect the gateway to your computer, switch it on by pushing and holding this button for more than one second and run the iCurve IDE. In the left bottom corner you can see that the gateway was successfully connected. Since we connected the GSM gateway with a USB cable, it operates as a USB gateway actually. Each gateway you buy has already general hardware profile and default configuration uploaded. If you want to upload your own custom BPA handler or TR configuration, you can do it in the very same way as we demonstrated in one of the previous tutorials. You just select the right files and hit F5. Usually the next step is to create your network. Since we have a different coordinator comparing to the previous tutorial, we have to unbond all the nodes from the original coordinator and bond them to the new one. Then you run discovery and you have your network fully up and running. If you don't know how to do all of this, please watch the tutorial called iCurve Network Setup. Now we need to set up the gateway connectivity to the GSM network, so we go to the gateway tool. You can get there hitting this button or you can go to the tools and the gateway tool. The default username is iQRF and the password is the same. You can change this authorization words right here in the gateway tool. As you can see there is a number of windows here and you can browse through them yourself. For our purpose we need just two of them. In the status window we need to copy the ID of the gateway so we have it available for the iCurve cloud later on. Then we go to the window basic and we type here the APN of our mobile data provider and our PIN code if required. In this field you set up how often the gateway gets connected to the iCurve cloud. The minimum for GSM gateway is 10 seconds. Here we have preset up that the gateway gets connected to the iCurve cloud server. If you buy an iCurve cloud license and you integrate it into your server, you would insert the address of your server right here. You upload the configuration to the gateway and you can go back to the status window to check the status of your gateway. Since we have there checking iCurve data, we know the gateway is communicating with the iCurve cloud properly. Now you can close the gateway tool window, disconnect the GSM gateway from your computer and go to the webpage cloud.icurve.org. If you are not registered yet, you go to the registration and fill in the requested fields here. After saving your data, you will get a registration email that must be confirmed to complete the registration process. Once you do it, you can log into the iCurve cloud. The first thing you need to do here is to register your gateway. So you click on Add Gateway and with Ctrl V you insert the gateway ID you copied from the gateway tool. If you haven't changed the password, you use the default one, iQRF. You hit back and you can see your gateway ID, status, IP address, here you can change the name and the password of the gateway and here you can remove it. When you click on the name of the gateway, you will get to this data log. You can filter here RX or TX packets and display your data in ASCII or hexadecimal. In the data log you will find index, date and time when the message was received by the server and the gateway, if the packet was TX or RX, what was the data length and the data. For TX packets you can check here the status as well. Now let me show you how you can send a command right here from the iCurve cloud. You hit this button send data to iQRF and you get this window. Here you can type in your DPA request or you can use one of the ready macros. So let's say we want to read temperature from all nodes in our network. We click on this macro to get the DPA request filled in automatically. You can see that it's the very same command we used in the iCurve IDE. We insert the password of the gateway and hit send. Here we can observe three statuses. Not picked, 
sent from the cloud to the gateway and confirmed by the coordinator. In a while, we can see a response with temperature data in hexadecimal. So now you are completely controlling your iCurve network from the internet. Most probably you don't want to control your network manually from the iCurve cloud though, but I guess rather automatically and directly from your website. You can do this using a very simple API. The API is fully explained in the iCurve Cloud Users Guide, which is as usually available on the download section of the iCurve.org. Let me now show you how simple it is to send commands from your website. Again, we will read the temperature from all nodes using the FRC command. Here is the command you need to send from your website. This is the address of the iCurve Cloud, my user ID, my very original password, GID of the gateway, password of the gateway, a command for upload, and the DPA command itself. As you can see here, this is the standard temperature FRC command we send from the iCurve IDE as well as from the iCurve cloud. We send it out and we go back to the cloud. After a refresh of the data log, we find the command here we've just sent from our website. In a short while, a response comes back and we can download it with this API command. You can see that the only difference in the command is that we want to download data and just the last log. Data of the temperature on our nodes are displayed right here. So, the communication from any website to iCurve nodes and back is working perfectly. Now it's just up to you how you use all of this. The iCurve is prepared in the way you can fully focus on development of your specific device, whatever it is, and your control application or website, whatever it looks like. Communication between your device and your application is completely sorted out by the iCurf. So, make your products wireless and part of the Internet of Things ecosystem. As you've just seen, it's simple. This video is just a small piece of a complete iCurf video tutorial set. To get a full picture and understanding of the iCurf technology, please watch previous and following iCurf tutorials.